himself. Hey, so Father Mitch here. I'd like to revisit the war post, the forging post. I did a video a while back, it's quite popular. Uh, but at the time I did it, I had a couple things that were missing that I needed to add um, and that uh, I had uninstalled and then I'm reinstalling. So I wanted you guys to see these things. What I've done is I've added a wooden foot down here so that we can practice our stumps. That's just a slice of uh, landscape timber and I've got a bolt drilled through it. You notice the bolt is slightly off center. That's just because there was a, a kind of a, a natural hard area in the wood that I wanted to avoid. Uh, worked out nicely like this. And so now you can go ahead and you can practice your stomps and get accustomed to that and then throw them in in the midst of their combos. So you might say you could do a little kick, bang, and then deliver a kick with your heel against the top of the foot. Now here I've added a piece of rope and this is the original piece of rope that I used to have on here that I took off and I've just reinstalled it. I had to rewrap everything. Things wear out pretty quickly out here in the outdoors. Now what is this? Well this simulates a collar uh, of a garment, uh, a jacket, something like that. And it helps you to remember your various garment chokes. So reaching up, over here and then doing your chokes, bracing chokes, old number seven, etc. And learning to practice those and being conscious of how to use those is very important. There's downward grabs, obviously, then there's the opposite side grabs, all those things. And so having this here keeps us conscious of the fact that we have garment chokes available for, for, uh, for use and manipulation in the midst of all the other attacks that we have. So that we can, you know, we can practice. We can hit, grab, choke, whatever we like to do with the target. Now, I also wanted to point out that last time I might not have made it 100% clear, and I want to make this clear too. Uh, and that is that there's a difference between the war posts that we use to toughen our bodies and the war posts that we use for our weapons. The war posts that we use for our bodies helps us define our techniques and hone our techniques, as well as to callous and toughen our bodies for uh, actual hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The war post that we use for weapons, on the other hand, is something entirely different. And that is conditioning us for full force attacks with an actual weapon. That's teaching us command and mastery of an actual weapon. You cannot hit this as hard as you can. You can hit that other war posts with your weapons as hard as you want. But if you commence to hitting this as hard as you can, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Now you can work your way up gradually to harder and harder levels of contact. And you can begin to toughen your body and prepare your body for fairly hard contact against this thing. But this is something, this is about toughening your body, not about wrecking it. The other war post is about wrecking that war post with your weapon so that you have command and mastery of the tool. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please browse to heritageartsinc.com and check out our free programs. Now, as you can see by the condition of this post, we go at this 100%, and you should do that with your weapon so that you're accustomed to real contact. That's, that's really the point of the a war post for your weapons. Ideally, would have it set up so that you could actually get on the ground and you could lay beside it and you could practice using your weapons on your side, uh, on your back, where you can strike upward at it, and from a variety of angles, because it's very important that you be able to use your weapon in a variety of different positions. <coughs> Make sure that you use, if you do cuts, that you do drawing cuts so you don't overshoot and cut your leg. So you want to make sure that you cut and you pull at the end of your cuts. Mainly stabs and make sure you cover your vital areas.
practice all your grips. You might have to pick up a knife from the environment and you want to be able to use it no matter how your hand falls on it. Standing on the ground, prone, on one knee, on either knee, and so on. Now you'll notice that I have out here a rail and some uh, saw horses, and this stuff is used for um, vaults so that you can clear an obstacle. Now early on, you should not be doing these with a live weapon. You should be practicing your vaults with a wooden weapon in one hand so that you can clear obstacles with the weapon in your hand. So, eventually though, just like a soldier in the armed forces, you should be able to run your drills with a live firearm. You should be able to run your drills here with a live tomahawk or with a live uh, knife if necessary. Over here I've got a, made myself a four foot ruler and this allows me to adjust the height and to increase it incrementally so I can increase my height or as I'm getting older measure when I have to reduce the height. <laughs> but uh, you know you have to do the best that you can do with the body that you have and part of this is about being in touch with who you are right now. It's great to be aspirational, but it's also important to know what you are and are not capable of. Now, you might watch someone on TV doing parkour and say, oh, I can do that because they make it look so easy. But the reality is, is that you might not be able to jump over a paper napkin on the sidewalk. So it's good to know what you can and cannot do, even if it's not great just know what you can do and what you're capable of. And just remember, the goal is realism and also health and longevity in the martial arts. So as you train with uh, your war posts, let's say, start off easy slow build up your toughness over time incrementally there's no sense breaking yourself down injuring yourself hurting yourself bruising yourself and so on and when it comes to your war post for weapons don't go overboard too soon start off uh, full power wearing goggles and so on and gloves standing in a static position and before you begin to move through the environment with a sharp object, always make sure that you practice with a dull weapon first. Because leaping into weapon training with a live weapon before you're ready could result in serious injury. Didn't your mom ever tell you not to run with scissors? Hey, credit where credit's due. Thanks to the great Hawk Hawkheim for his original Warpost Weapon X DVDs that were the starting point for me in my search for command and mastery of weapons. Train safely, take care, and God bless.